You're looking at uh, Caprosma Evening Glow. This is a summer shot uh, when the temperatures are warmer. You're going to see in a minute that the t uh, foliage color changes drastically. So this is how it looks in the summer and fall and late spring. Um, it has a variegated leaf. It's primarily a, a soft yellowy green with a darker green margin as you can see better here. It has a glossy leaf and um, these leaves are probably about a half to three quarter inch long and they're a little longer than they are wide. Um, depending on their situation you see how there's a little color uh, darker color in there and then here you see that there's a lot of red and brighter yellow. This is a plant that has a little more stress. It might have more light or it might have low water but when the plant stresses that's when you start to get the color that gives us its name and this picture this next photo shows it in the winter and you're gonna see it in um, January in just a moment here but this is the evening glow color that gives it its name so a couple of things here these are one-year-old plants roughly from five gallon containers we're in northern California in an inland valley where it gets into the uh, 90s regularly during the summer and it gets into the uh, high to mid 20s uh, during the winter and we've had plenty of frost the past month or so probably uh, 10 nights or more and one of the things that gives these plants their distinctive uh, orangey red glow is the cold temperature in the winter so um, you'll see a picture of this during the summer where it's more of a yellow uh, variegation, yellow and green, but as soon as the cold hits them they get this nice color to them. Um, this, gr this is a grouping of three plants. Uh, temperature wise, I'm sorry, size wise these are about 18 inches tall by 20 to 24 inches wide and we put these on 24 inch uh, centers or spacing just so you know on the spacing. Uh, I love to use these as a color break. I use a lot of foliage color to create interest. You can see the Nandina uh, Gulf Stream behind it which will end up getting about three, three and a half feet tall. And um, these caprosma, they do get taller. I mean, I've read that they'll get four feet tall, but in this case, we're going to be keeping them around two feet tall. There's a Loripetalum razzleberry behind there that will get five or six feet tall, and then we'll have a nice layered effect. Um, so, um, the thing that's also interesting about these, as a note, is the leaves are very glossy. They all, all look kind of shiny and waxed. You can see the sheen to them. And also something to know about variegated plants. Typically they are a mutation of a green plant. And why I'm bringing that up is because right here, this is a stem that's reverting. And a reversion is when a plant starts to go back to what it naturally was. Somebody, when they get these variegations, they'll make a cutting and they'll stick it in soil and they'll root it and they'll maintain that characteristic. But sometimes the mature plant uh, reverts and goes back to what it originally was. So just to give you a sense of that, because this plant has um, it, it reverts more than any of the variegated plants I've ever dealt with and so I, I tell my clients to uh, prune those reversions off when they they notice them before they become too much of the plant so that's just something to be aware of you see how green this leaf is compared to all the ones behind it so that's kind of the giveaway and before these uh, color up for the winter that's even more obvious um, I love caprosmas. These are one of my favorite groups of plants. So wow, see how this whole branch in here has the darker green color? That's another example of the reverting back. Um, as I was saying, uh, these caprosmas have so many interesting colors. There's Rainbow Surprise and there's um, a couple of other ones, uh, Marble Queen. They just have great leaf color 
and uh, I highly recommend getting to know these and using them in design because they give you so many possibilities for color combinations that are low maintenance. There's no flower, there's no berry. This is solely a foliage plant. It's nice and compact and uh, especially in residential uses the size is just ideal for so many different applications. So that's what I can tell you about, uh, oh, water-wise, I'd say these are average garden water. Uh, they're not drought tolerant as far as I know. I wouldn't try and treat them that way. I've seen these do best when they're getting some pretty regular water. This client told me that he's hit these with miracle Grow a couple of times in their first year, and they've grown as well as any that I've seen for one year old. So um, I would say feeding these is a good idea. Uh, and if you want to use them, don't try and treat them like they're a native low water plant. I don't think they're going to behave well for you under those conditions. And that is Caprosma Evening Glow. Oh, one last thing. Uh, these are not deer tolerant. I tried these in a deer area and the deer liked them just fine. So uh, I tried two different Caprosmas in deer areas and both times the deer ate them down to nothing, so I would not call these a deer-resistant plant.